Over the past few months, I realized how often I kept getting stuck in this vicious cycle, feeling happy, content with life, very optimistic about my days. And then all of the pressures of life just set back in. Routines, deadlines, the constant rush of trying to get things done as soon as possible, having never-ending interruptions and distractions, leading once again to burnout. I was being really snappy and short with my kids, even my husband, and just not ready to get up and face the morning. And instead I would just bury myself in my phone looking for a distraction, a way to get away from the responsibilities of life, all those things that were just like weighing on me so heavily. But then also chasing the standard of like how I felt like life should look, being a wife, being a mother, running a home, even the fact that my children have been looking up to me and that I am an example for them. You have these short-term goals that you have set and then you reach them and then you ask what's next and you move on to the next thing and then you keep going and going and tiring yourself out and you think, okay, I have a roof over my head, I have a spouse who loves me and children who love me and yet I feel so exhausted and unhappy. And a big part of that came from all of those extra things that I did not need in my life that were stressing me out. I know everybody has something that is holding us to this strict schedule day in and day out, but I started asking myself, why are you letting these things get to you so much? As soon as I made these changes, I really noticed a difference in my life. The ease and joy of embracing slower living and truly finding contentment in living a more home-based and simple lifestyle. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Julie and I share life-changing tips on how to be frugal and live more simply. Somewhat of an attitude of just less but better. Many of us are spending so much time and energy on the things that are not gonna matter in the long run and that are just depleting so much of our energy and time. But filling our time with all of these meaningless and worthless things is just gonna leave us feeling more drained, more spent, and is not going to improve our well-being or our mental state. The first and most important change that I have made is to start every day with the Lord. If I don't let God be the first thing that I think about in the morning, my day does not ever go as well. In fact, my kids' favorite song right now that they listen to on repeat is Rise and Chide and Give God the Glory. And it is absolutely a reminder that God gives us everything that we need every single day. He is the source of everything. He's the source of our patience, of our love. Psalm 46 actually tells us that God is our refuge and our strength an ever-present help in trouble, therefore we will not fear. And Proverbs 3 tells us, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make straight your paths. God is the one who fills us up every day. Why wouldn't we spend that time allowing him to fill us up every single morning so that we're prepared and we're ready for whatever it is that we have to take on that day? In fact, it's pretty foolish to think that we can do everything without his help. Don't be going into a battle without a sword. I like to just say, Lord, I give you this day. I submit myself to you. Help me to surrender everything to you and to entrust everything to your care, knowing that everything is going to happen because he wills it. Reminding yourself that God is with you and by your side. The next thing is to put your phone away much more. I talked about this in another video about simplifying, but when you think about it, our phones are designed to fit in the palm of our hands, not only so that we can talk with ease, but also so that they fit in our pockets and that they're just easy to carry with us throughout the day. But then the danger of that is that you never put it down. You never have an excuse to put it down. You always have it on you. And to intentionally put it somewhere where it's out of your sight, out of mind, you're not thinking about it, you don't have access to it. We're so attached to them, whether we're using it to call somebody or text someone or to scroll along the internet. I mean like hours of social media. And we may not want to admit this to ourselves, but it can definitely lead to being more jealous of what we see online, of what other people have, and being more discontent with what we have. You need to put it away more regularly for a digital detox. You'll notice the way that you feel when you intentionally choose not to pick it up all the time and to just forget about the outside world and focus more on the people and things around you. You're missing out on so much more tangible connections and one-on-one -on -one time that you could be spending with your friends and family. So much of that communication, whether it's with your spouse or a sibling or friends. Which brings me to my third point, which is to spend more time with your friends and family. Strive to make your home the happiest and most comfortable place for your family to be. Whether it's spending time to put together a special meal or an activity, or if you can play together and eat together and even pray together. Finding more ways that everybody can participate and spend quality time with each other. 
That could be an evening walk after dinner or going to the local library. We like to put on some music and everybody dances or play a board game together. Even playing a sport or going to a local attraction together. Whatever you do, you should be looking for activities that you can all bond together and reminisce and create lasting memories that you can fondly look back on. The next thing that I really worked on was to not become irritated with distractions. I particularly have a really hard time with this because I have younger children and most times I'll be in the middle of trying to complete a task and they're wanting to play with me. They're wanting me to look and watch at what they're doing. And I just wanna finish what it is that I'm working on and then put that down so that I can then pay attention to what they want me to look at. But a lot of times I have to remind myself that what I'm doing is not more important. And I get kind of annoyed if they're bothering me and interrupting me. But I try to remind myself that they are my most important work. Or if it's a friend calling you in the middle of doing something. Sometimes giving somebody your undivided attention can be the most important thing that you can do for them that day. You can make a huge difference. You just never know what kind of impact you can have in somebody else's life. In showing them that they are the most important thing for you in that exact moment. The next thing that I worked on was that if I was able, I took a nap. We seem to have adapted this mentality that if you are not working on something all the time, you are deemed lazy. But if we never slow down to give our bodies a break, that will most definitely lead to burnout. We'll be more grumpy with not only ourselves, but with other people, and that will just lead to us being a very unpleasant person to be around. Take a nap or do something else that you find relaxing and that you feel is a non-work-related experience. Take a bath or go for a long walk. Or the next point, which I had to read more and to spend time watching TV much less. Studies have shown that screen time definitely depletes our attention spans and it makes it far harder for us to focus and to become more and more easily distracted. Reading allows your body to just get into a more relaxed state by sitting down, maybe brew yourself a cup of tea or coffee, and just get totally lost in what you're reading about. Books are just far less visually stimulating and relaxing for your mind than just scrolling through your phone. It really allows you to analyze that information that you are reading and to just think it over. The next way that I've simplified is to stop listening to the news. There is just so much drama and unnecessary negativity out there. The news always will focus on the worst parts of humanity and all the trauma in the world. It's not to say that you should totally shut yourself out to what's happening in the world today, but if you are hearing that stuff day in and day out, you're gonna start worrying a whole lot more about yourself and your family and your circumstances. You just become far less trusting of your own community. And it's not to say that you should be naive about those things, but ask yourself if that's really benefiting you listening to that stuff. If anything, we should certainly pray for peace, but we shouldn't let it consume our every thought and our every action and become fearful of going out into the world. We shouldn't despair that the world can never get better. The next thing I practiced was to really be grateful for what you have. Do you remember all of those things that you prayed for? Maybe it was a home or a family or a really good job or even really good health. There's a multitude of things that we absolutely take for granted. We're always thinking about the next thing that we can add to either our home or our wardrobe. We think if I just have that one more thing, I'll finally be happy. But St. Augustine was right when he said that our hearts are restless until they rest in you, when he was talking about how much we need the Lord to guide us and to be our ultimate goal and to always thank him for the many blessings that he's already bestowed on us. My next point is to give things away. Get rid of all that extra clutter in your home, whether it is your clothes, things in your house, or maybe it's people in your life that just bring more noise and negativity. Just remember to share and be generous with others. Second Corinthians tells us that God loveth a cheerful giver. Be generous and you will be prosperous help others and you will be helped. So give freely to needy people. Let your heart be tender toward them. Then the Lord your God will bless you in all your work. He will bless you in everything you do. It feels good to get rid of stuff and help somebody else in the process. And sometimes it's better to be a good example than to offer advice on how you can be a good example. The next thing you can do is to find a hobby. What brings you joy? Can you think of an activity that you've done that you always wish that you knew more about? Why not start learning about it today? Sometimes our biggest regrets are the things that we should have done but didn't. Whether it's learning a new language or learning a new instrument, find something that you can practice and master in the comfort of your own home. Pull up a tutorial or a YouTube video for instructions so that you can follow along. You don't have to be perfect at it, but maybe it's a skill that you can learn so that you can share it with your friends and family, like baking or even crafting. My next tip is that as they say, silence is golden. We often fill our day 
with noise because of the discomfort of silence. Whether we find ourselves alone in the car or things are very, very quiet around the house, always listening to music or podcasts, whether we're in our earbuds or just out loud, it takes discipline to enjoy silence every now and then. Silence is a very important way that God can speak to us too. And it's a way to just have more peace in the house and quiet and gentleness and stillness. Enjoy all the sounds around you, like birds chirping in the distance, the pattering of rain on a stormy day, coffee steaming from your morning brew, the sound of your children laughing and playing in the yard. Now those are true sounds of peace and joy. And my next point is let your house be a mess sometimes. Obviously, if you never clean up after yourself, that can lead to more stress, but we always have the pressure of cleaning up after ourselves to keep things tidy. I especially struggle with this because my kids will just leave a trail of chaos behind them and move from room to room. Enjoy the fun activities with them and then leave the cleanup for the end of the day. Do it before bed, that way you're not just doing it all throughout the day. Jeremiah 29 tells us, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. When we truly put God first, all other things will fall into place. He is always going to be our ultimate peace and comfort when we're chasing after other things. Slow living ultimately brings you peace and unity in your home, in your relationships, with your family, your spouse. You can become the best version of yourself because you can cast aside all of those extra things that are taking up your precious time. Life is full of seasons, not just throughout the year, but also also throughout your life. And some of them can be more difficult and challenging, but I know that you're gonna get through this one too. Hopefully you found this episode really insightful and helpful for you to reassess the things in your life that should matter the most to you. Also, if you found this video helpful, be sure to check out my playlist on minimalism and frugal living. Please give it a thumbs up so that I know that it was helpful for you. I would also love for you to join this community. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and join us in the next episode. I hope to bring you more peace and joy in your life. I've shared many ways that you can simplify your life and save money this year. Let me know what tip had you not thought about before. And if you have a tip that's changed your life, we would love to hear about it in the comments below. Hit the bell so that you're notified the next time I upload a video and I will see you next time. Peace and blessings.